In today's video, we're gonna talk about what I think is the single most important piece of life-saving gear you can carry with you on your person, in your car, in your bug out bag, and even in your survival kit, a tourniquet. We're gonna talk about why you need one, five common myths and misconceptions about tourniquet use, and we're gonna show you how to use five of the most common tourniquets on the market. That's what's coming up next here on Survival On Purpose. Welcome back to Survival On Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me for today's video about what I think is a really important topic. Um, and that's, we're going to talk a little bit about tourniquets, as I said. But first, a big thanks to my friend John at Hog Holsters for sponsoring today's video. Hog Holsters is the holster that I carry every single day and have ever since I discovered them. This is mine here. You can see John uses the Ulti Clip, which clips onto your pants, not your belt. Um, it's the only clip that I, I think is, is a, probably that I would want to use. And what's cool about it is if you're not wearing a belt for some reason, you can still carry your, your firearm with you in a safe holster, which is good. Hog holsters are made in the USA and Arizona, one at a time with old, old world craftsmanship by John. And you can save 10% on your hog holster order over 30 bucks by using the coupon code survival on purpose, all one word, when you check out at hogholsters.com. Uh, be sure and tell John I said hello. So, tourniquets. So first of all, I said we're going to talk about why you need a tourniquet. Look, you see that I carry a gun, so certainly if you carry things to make holes, you need to carry things to fix holes. But it's much more likely I'm going to need a tourniquet than I'm going to need a pistol, just to be honest with you. So, and, and, and the same goes for you or anybody else. I'm on a mission to get everybody in, everybody that watches my videos to carry a tourniquet because this literally could save your life. And there's several different different varieties. This is a pretty good size. There's some smaller ones. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But first, I want to talk about five common myths and misconceptions uh, about tourniquets. First of all, people say a tourniquet is a last resort. That is false. If, if there's a, if there's an, a bleeding injury on on an arterial, especially an arterial bleeding injury, heavy bleeding on an extremity, a tourniquet is the first thing you should do because seconds count. You could literally bleed to death or bleed beyond the point of saving um, in a very, very short period of time, especially if you have a, a leg wound and you cut the femoral artery in your leg, so or somebody else's leg. So a tourniquet's not a last resort. It's not like some kind of horrible thing. And the second thing that goes with that, the reason people say it's a last resort is because they say, if you put a tourniquet on, you're gonna lose that limb. That's not true. That's something that comes back from the Civil War days. Certainly, there is a danger of, of tissue damage and even of losing a limb if a tourniquet stays on too long. But most of the experts, medical experts, say that um, you're completely safe to use a tourniquet for up to two hours. And after that, the longer you wait, the greater the risk of amputation. But at the end of the day, if I have a choice between bleeding to death and potentially losing my limb, you're probably going to pick the limb, right? That's my opinion anyway. So uh, that's, that's number two. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose a limb. In fact, most likely you won't. Number three is, and the Boy Scouts were teaching this not very long ago, that you need to loosen a tourniquet periodically. I don't know why you'd want to do that because once you stop the bleeding, why do you, why do you want to get it started again? Tourniquets should only be removed by the medical professional once you get somebody to, um, to them, right? Most of us, unless you're way, way in the back country, you're going to be able to get to a hospital within two hours. Leave the tourniquet on, um, get them to the hospital, get them to the paramedic, to the ambulance or whatever. Let the medical professionals take care of it. Usually they'll take it off when they get ready to do surgery to repair the wound. That's number three. Number four, and I hear this every time I bring up tourniquets, I'll just use my belt. A belt's just as good. Well, we're gonna give that one a maybe, okay? Because yes, uh, you can sometimes stop bleeding with a belt or with a, some other improvised tourniquet, um, possibly. But, the, but the, the downside is generally the studies have shown that you have to, like a belt will work sometimes, but you have to maintain that constant pressure. So you can't let go of it. You got to keep pulling it. There's nothing you can do really with like a, a leather belt, especially a thick belt to, to use a windlass on it because it's too thick to do that. So you just got to keep the pressure on it, hold it. And that may be something you're unable to do, especially in a, in, if there's a lot of stuff going on. For my money, it's just easy to carry something that's going to work, period. And finally, the fifth myth that a lot of people have about tourniquets and misconception, and I hear this a lot every time I talk about a tourniquet, is that it has to be TCCC approved. And they're a government organization that's designed to study and help teach um, ca combat casualty care to the military. And what I, my understanding is they don't approve anything, they just review things. So anyway, that is a myth. All these tourniquets I'm going to show you today all work. They are all not TCCC Re re regulated or rated or reviewed, but they all work. So we're gonna start talking about tourniquets, how to use them, and we're gonna go real quickly on how to use each one of these. A couple of universal guidelines to that. 
First of all, you need to practice with your tourniquets. I would suggest buying two of whatever you want to use, whatever you want to carry, and use one to practice because as you use it, it tends to get wear on it. So you really want to have one to practice and know how to use it, and the other one you want to keep for emergency uses. Although I would say one, one thing I would caution you, go ahead and at least try it one time and make sure it's going to work because what you don't want to do is wind up with one like this that the first time you use it, you get a windlass that breaks like this and it's no good. Um, so you want to make sure that the one you have works. And that was the Chinese knockoff of a cat tourniquet. So just to be clear, you want to make sure the one you have works. But second of all, the best practices now, you put the tourniquet as high and as close to the body as possible, as close to the trunk as possible. On the arm, you're going to put it right up here. On the leg, you're going to put it, oh, well, you can't see my leg, but all the way up as close to the groin as you can get. Be careful with stuff up there, but get the tourniquet up there. And the reason for that is because a couple of reasons. First of all, sometimes when an artery is cut, it retracts up into the um, body. So you may put your tourniquet right above the wound, but the artery is still bleeding. Ar artery is still bleeding above the wound. And second of all, there may be another wound that you don't notice. You just get it as high as you can. That's going to cover everything in that entire limb. And that's, that's the only thing a tourniquet's for is for, for a limb. So if it's bleeding anywhere else, the tourniquet's not the answer. Um, and then the other one, if it doesn't hurt, it's not tight enough. So um, and then finally. When you do put a tourniquet on, watch the patient because sometimes it hurts so bad that they'll want to take it off because the pain is hurting them so bad, especially if they're younger or if they're in shock or something. And it's, it's going to hurt. It is going to hurt. Okay. okay, now let's talk about how to use each of these different tourniquet styles. First one we're going to look at is the RAT, rapid, rapid tourniquet. It used to be known as a rapid application tourniquet, and this is an elastic tourniquet. Uh, this tourniquet has some pros and cons. The pros are, and one of the pros, the biggest pros is, in my opinion, you can use it on a limb about that big around, at least a very small limb like so. So it's really good for small children or pets. Another one is it's really small. It's, it's compact. It's easy to carry. To my mind, the, the real biggest pr con is that this one hurts, in my opinion, worse than all the rest of them. So there's that. I know people say it's a con. That this one's not TCCC approved. Again, it works. It has got, it, it's been documented to save lives in, in combat, in the field. It's got a lot of history of that. So I say use it. It works, okay? If you don't believe me, take some training and, and check it out. So, so here's how I use it. And I also think it's good to practice on yourself because if you can do it on yourself one-handed, you can do it on somebody else two-handed really easily. So here's what um, the way I recommend doing this. It's got a, what's called a three-finger loop here. That's what that little loop on the end is called. I stick my fingers through it from the, from. I try to do it from the uh, little latch side and then reach under, I go, I drop the tourniquet over my arm. If I'm gonna do this arm, reach under the arm and just reach through there and get it with my fingers and, and pull it through the loop. Then I got it, bring it as high as you can and then I'll pull it as tight as I can get it this way. I like to do it that way, so I'm pulling this way instead of pushing that way because I got more leverage this way I can get it tighter quicker. That's why, I, that's why I wrap it the way I did. So once I got it through there, just pull it like this, start wrapping it around, keep, keep going tighter every time. Now ideally, you want to kind of layer these where they're, where they're not right on top of each other so you're creating a wider band of compression, right? It goes around as many as you can and you get to the end, you can pull it up and lock it in that little little lock right here. Let me give you a close up of that. Up, oh, see that? And it's locked in right there, and it's on. And I can tell you that it's um just a, a redneck way to check it is feel for a pulse. Now you can use a pulse oximeter or whatever. I don't have a pulse now, and it's hurting. So I'm gonna take it off. So. <laughs> I'm doing this for you. Okay, so that's how you use it, and you do the same thing for anybody else on a leg or on an arm. So that's the uh, RAT, Rapid Application Tourniquet, or actually it's a Rapid Tourniquet now. And this one's available for around 20 bucks made in the USA. You get that one from mymedic.com. The next one we're gonna look at is the H&H &H HK4 Tourniquet. It is also an elastic tourniquet. Uh, it's got a hook on each end, if you can see those hooks right there. And uh, the pros of this one to me are it's very, very compact. You can, you can actually carry this in your pocket or just stick it in. I usually just stick them in my sock. I started wearing an ankle med kit now and I use a different tourniquet, but when I was carrying this one, I just stick it in my sock. It's a very, very, very small package, okay? So um, that's the biggest pro. And, and the other pro is this one's about under 10 bucks. This is probably the least expensive of all tourniquets. You can buy a bunch of these and have them everywhere. Uh, the con for me, one of the negatives is it's a little hard to use, especially one-handed on yourself. So, But I'm going to try to demonstrate that for you just to show you. If I fumble a little bit, just bear with me because it is a little hard to use. But um, So I want to take this, do the same thing. I'm going to grab the hook in my hand. I'm going to loop this over my arm like so and we'll try to reach underneath here and catch it and get it into 
get the, the tourniquet itself into the hook, like so. You see this? So I've got it caught in there now. Now you do the same thing. You start wrapping around, pull it as tight as you possibly can. Tighter is tighter, is tighter, is tighter, as tight as you can. Just keep pulling it really, really tight. I mean, it needs to be, it needs to hurt, okay? Keep pulling it really, really, really tight. And this one also kind of, I'm trying to keep it flat. So it, 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 it you know, creates a wider band of compression. And I might have it a little low, but the, the, other, the other negative for this one for me is, is I have a hard time, when you get it finished, what you're supposed to do is you take this hook and you hook it under, under the, uh, one of the layers and that holds it. So that one wasn't too hard at all. And now I've got it on and now just redneck pulse test. I've got no pulse so, and it's hurting. So I'm gonna take it off now. Next one we're gonna look at is honestly my least favorite of the tourniquets, but it does have some pros. And this one is the SWAT T, another elastic tourniquet. And uh, what's really useful about this one is, I think it's, it, it functions as more than just a tourniquet. You can also use this as a pressure wrap. It's also pretty, pretty long. I'm gonna guess this thing is about five foot long, five feet long. So you can actually use it for an abdominal. Um, you could use it for an abdominal pressure bandage. Um, you could almost use it for a chest seal if you get it wrapped around right. Um, so it does have some pros. Um, the uh, negative for me is it is to me this is the hardest one to use by yourself and just show you how this thing is supposed to work so it has an indicator of when it's supposed to be tight enough so you see this little oblong diamond looking thing here you got to stretch it supposedly you stretch it until it looks like that so when you got it stretched out like that then it's, it's, it's closer to right so again to me this is hardest to use um by myself but I'm gonna try, so I'm gonna do this one more time on my left arm, because I don't think I could do it with my, I, we'll, we'll try it on my right arm, okay, we'll just try it and see. So what I have to do is get around as high as I can get it and kind of hold it up under there, and then hopefully just kind of count on friction to hold it in place so I can get at least half a wrap or so started so it, it'll, it'll, it'll catch on itself. And then just start stretching the heck out of it as tight as you can again. Same thing, just keep stretching it. You know, it's, it's good to get it wide, but sometimes you just can't do that, so just stretch it, stretch it. Keep stretching it, and it's hurting already. Keep stretching it, keep stretching it. Oh man, it's hurting, yeah. Now for me, the, oh, the downside to this is, it's really hard, you gotta tuck this thing under, and I have a hard time, when I've got it tight enough to stop the blood flow, I, got a hard, I have a hard time getting the end of it tucked under anywhere. Um, and maybe I can get it right there. Okay, so, one-handed. It's a lot easier if you're doing it with somebody else, but if you're doing it to yourself, um, let's try the redneck pulse test. Okay, I don't feel a pulse, so um, that's good. So it's, uh, again, it works. It's just, it's my least favorite. But it also is pretty handy because it, like, like I say, it's got kind of a multi-use role. It can, it can do more than, be more than just a tourniquet. So that's the uh, SWAT T. This one's around 18 bucks online. Now we're gonna look at a couple of windless tourni tourniquets. Both of these are TCCC reviewed, so they're on the TCCC list. This is the SOF tourniquet, and it is a windless tourniquet, which means it has a windless you can crank to tighten it up. And this one has a uh, couple different features. There's no Velcro, you'll notice on this, so one thing's good about this, you can one of the pros is you can stage this very easily so that we can just grab this tail and drop it, and it's open, it's ready to go. You don't have any pulling Velcro off or anything. Um, that's one of the pros. The other pro is it's got a little, little clip right here. If you want to just, if you want to quickly just put it around and do that, you can. If you're trying to do it one-handed, that's really difficult. Um, I, I try to use, just leave the loop in it. So let me just show you how this one works. Put it over your arm or, or your leg, as high as you can go. Pull it as tight as you can. And the hard part about this is, is getting it, is getting it tight without it slipping around because you want it to be as tight as you can get it before you start the windlass. So you can kind of um, press it down with your mouth or whatever. So that's pretty tight. Then just start cranking. And you want to crank it as much as it'll crank, to be honest with you. But once you get it really tight, that's really hurting too, man. I, I, I got to move it up a little bit. This one really does hurt. So yeah, so 
This one has a little triangle shaped thing here. Let me show you. It's got a little triangle clip right here. You have to pull it in tight and hook that clip over and just like, ah, uh, come on, man. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> you gotta get it twisted up here where the clip is going in. Uh, okay. And get it, make sure it's engaged right there really good. You probably couldn't see any of that, but I got it on there. Yeah, I still have a pulse, so. Let me see if I can get this thing off. Ooh, let me take it off for a minute. My, my arm's hurting. We'll try the other arm, okay? Put it on here like so. Get it really high. I'm trying to get it where it'll that gum as tight as it'll get. So that's it. No other tightening. Start cranking this thing down. It's really hard to do one-handed. To get it tight enough. Mm, golly. I can't get it tight enough. I don't think it's gonna stop. Let's see if I got a pulse. Okay, I don't feel a pulse. I guess it's tight enough, it's hurting like crazy. So, uh, that's the, wow. Whew. So that's the, the SOF. And um, I'll tell you what, a couple things I'm not too thrilled about with this one, okay? It's really hard to get that last little bit of, little bit of um, tightness on here. And then the uh, windlass just, man, it was really, really hard to get the windlass tight enough one-handed so that I could, um, it kept wanting to spring back. So, uh, but it works. And again, this is, this is TCCC. I'll be honest with you. I like both of the rat. I like this one and this one probably better than this one, at least for, for self-application. Okay. So if I, this will probably be fine for somebody else. Okay. So that's the SOF tourniquet. Okay. Finally, last, but certainly not least, this is what the uh, what is actually my preferred tourniquet. It's the one that I carry in my ankle med kit, and it's the uh, combat application or cat tourniquet. Um, and this one, by the way, this last one, the SOF, is about thirty bucks, as is the combat application tourniquet. So, here's the cat tourniquet. Let's talk about the difference in it. The, the main difference is this one has a bunch of Velcro here and doesn't have that little hook on it. So the whole thing is Velcroed on the outside and it has a, um, uh, same thing, has a plastic windlass. And the other difference is instead of that little, that little triangle, you got to flip up and, and manipulate this one. All you got to do is get it over in place and it locks back in. So this one's just easier, in my opinion, to put on. So, but let me, one handed especially. So let me just show you how this one works. So put it all the way up. We'll do this on the left hand now. Get, get my right arm break. I like this. This it, just to me is easier to get tight, right? Because I can pull it. You want it as tight as you can get it before you start twisting the windlass. So you got, and then you got the Velcro here. You can just stick it on. It stays in place. You can start start with that tape move, twisting that windlass like this, and you don't have to twist it very much once you got that Velcro tight. And it's a uh, there it is, it's in there. And there's no doubt that thing stopped because it's hurting like crazy right now. So easy, it just popped right in that little groove there. And so, well, make sure it's all the way in there like so. Popped all the way in the little groove there. And then if you take it out, it's really easy to do that also. Not that you'll be taking it off, but when you're practicing, you want to take it off, I promise you. <laughs> and I failed to mention, they all have a little tag on here to write the time on. It's a good idea to write the time on, on some, with, on the uh, tourniquet, so that even just a sharpie on the tourniquet itself, so that the uh, medical people can know how long it's been on and know how much time they have to get it off before any damage is done. Okay, so that is how to use what I think are five of the most common tourniquets that you'll find. Um, in just a minute, I'll give you my final piece of advice, but, but, but just to, for a quick recap, uh, like, like I said, um, I think it's really, really important that we all have tourniquets. Uh, I'm, I'm really amazed at how many um, survival kits I've seen over the years, and honestly, ones I've made over the years that didn't have a tourniquet. I fixed that in my game. I encourage you to fix it in yours. We also talked about 
five common misconceptions about tourniquets. Hopefully I cleared some of that up. And finally, we took a look at how to self-apply five of the most common tourniquets on the market. Um, real quickly, I'll say my favorite of all these tourniquets is the cat tourniquet, hands down. I think it's the easiest to apply to self-apply. It's also one of the most expensive at 30 bucks. Uh, my second favorite for self-application anyway is the uh, rapid tourniquet, the RAT, this one here. Comes in different colors as well. I also like this one because it's good for children. And it's about 20 bucks. And then I got I to gotta give a, a, a really shout out to the folks at H&H &H because this TK4 is a very effective tourniquet. I like it because it's small. It's a little harder to self-apply, but, but, but it's, it's, you can get it done. And it's also around 10 bucks. So you can just buy a bunch of these and put them in all your vehicles, give them to your kids, put them in all your packs and just have one with you at all times. So a final word of encouragement and a quick word of advice and we'll wrap this up. First of all, I, I encourage you to, uh, if you don't carry a tourniquet, you don't have tourniquets, get them. Get, get some tourniquets um, and, and learn how to use them. My, my advice would be to take some training, some actual training. Tactical response, for example, is a great place to go. You can take their immediate action medical and they're, they're being trained by nurses and paramedics up there. Really good, good training up there. Teach you how to use a tourniquet and a bunch of other stuff, um, but also practice. Whatever tourniquets you get, practice with them. Practice with them, putting them on your right arm, your left arm, your right leg, your left leg. Practice putting them on other people. Teach your kids to practice. Um, get your family together, make it a family affair, just, and, and learn how to use them because um, when the time comes and you really need it, you're going to be very stressful and you don't want to be trying to figure it out um, at the last, you know, when you need it, right? You want to be able to know what you're doing, put it on because imagine if it was one of your kids or whatever. That's my advice and I really sincerely appreciate you watching this video. I think it's really important. So I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate your support for the channel. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.